We're living in a world of social distancing, which means we can't do ministry the same old way. That's really hard when it comes to doing children's ministry. Most little kids aren't on Facebook. Most little kids don't have their own Zoom accounts. But little kids love to play games. Minecraft is a great way to minister to kids and engage them in a safe environment. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up your own Minecraft server and get it deployed for your church. Waiting for perfection never got anything done. You just have to start. Okay, the first step in setting up your Minecraft server is to purchase a Minecraft server. So go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash Minecraft and you can use our affiliate link to get your Minecraft server set up. Okay, first thing, let's just go take a look at our pricing real quick and talk about that. We've got different server types here. We've got one gig of RAM, two gigs of RAM, three gig. This is the memory that the server is gonna be using, okay? So $6 a month gets you a basic server with one gig of RAM. You can get more if you need. Um, if you're gonna be adding, you know, mod packs or other plugins and all that sort of stuff, then you may want to get more. If you're gonna have quite a few people, on this server, then you may want to increase the RAM size. What's cool is you should be able to just increase your account relatively easy, just upgrade it and move forward should that time arrive. So let's just click on the first one here. That's what I did. And you're going to choose your billing cycle. You're going to give your, you're going to give your server a name. CMG, Church Media Guys, how about that? Give it a subdomain, CMG. Subdomain is available, so Church Media Guys, cmg.apexmc.co will be the subdomain. Now we need to choose our server. There are a lot of different server versions that are out there. Just scroll down a little bit and you'll get to the one that we're using, which is Bedrock Edition. Bedrock Dedicated Server, let's choose that. Bedrock allows you to have players coming in from all the different devices like um, you know your iPhones, Androids, tablets, things like that, as well as PCs. You cannot access it through a Mac. That's one of the limitations. And there is um, some hacks out there that you can do, a few hoops you have to jump through if you want to do it from your Xbox. So Bedrock Dedicated Server, choose a server location. You need to grab one that is as close to you as possible just so things will be faster. And then you can add it to your cart and check out. Okay, once you're done with the checkout process, you're gonna get an email that's gonna give you some information. You're going to log into your cPanel. And once you get logged in, first things first, go change your password so that it's something that you want it to be. So you'll put in the current password here, type in your new password, confirm it, and then hit save. Okay, and then go back and you're at the control panel here, your dashboard. Now let's just take a look at the first page here. When we scroll down, you'll see your server location. You'll also see the name of it. We called our CTA-Minecraft. And if you take a look at the subdomain, this is our subdomain, CTA for Church Training Academy, CTA. So the entire subdomain is cta.apexmc.co. And if you'll take a look here, here is the IP address. Now, there are a few things that you'll need in order to log in. So write down, this is also what you're going to be handing out to people. Um, write down your name for the server. Write down the subdomain and then write down the port. This is the port that you'll have to provide when you are logging in and joining this server from inside the game. Okay, now, there are a couple of things that you need to take a look at in the config file. So let's click over there, and we're gonna choose the one for server settings. Now, here's where you can turn on and off certain things that you want to do, or that you want to be allowed in the game. Now. If we're doing a game for little kids and we want to have it as, as safe as possible and not scary, then we need to make a few changes here. So allow flying, yes, that's great. Uh, difficulty. By default, it's like set to easy, but we can choose peaceful, and that's going to make it really easy for the kids. Game mode. Put it in creative mode. That way, if they're in survival mode, then they can fight each other. If you, know, you don't want uh, zombies and stuff like that coming after them and all this sort of stuff, if you're doing this with little kids, then creative is definitely the way to go. It's generally the safest. Okay, now down here where it says level seed, by default, this is left empty. 
And what this basically means is if, if this is left empty, then when the server is generated, what it's going to do is create a world. Now, it could be a world that has um, mountains and a desert and the ocean. Or it could be a world that has a forest and a desert. Or any number of combination of things. Just It's going to be a randomly generated world. Now, what's cool is there are codes that you can put in called seeds. So if we just do a quick search for Minecraft seeds, you can come up with all kinds of lists of seeds. And what they are is pre-built worlds that you can basically build base your server off of. So here's one, Woodland Mansion. Okay, and that's it. Your world starts off like this and you build from there. Here's one that is Frozen Islands. See, here's the seed number. You would copy that and paste it in and your world would be based, would be built just like that. With these lists, some of these may still be working. They may still not. You're just going to have to kind of roll the dice and see what you come up with. Spruce Village and Coral Reef, grab that seed. You could start your world like that, okay? I have one that I found that I am using. So I'm just pasting that in there. And now it will build my world based on that one. Now, for your kids, you may want to turn off player versus player. That means they can't fight each other. Spawning animals, you want that enabled so they can have pigs and horses and fish and all that kind of stuff. Spawning monsters. For little kids, you may want to disable that. The monsters aren't super scary. They're, I mean, it, they're all just pixelated blocks and all that. It's not like you're playing some, you know, World of Warcraft, big, huge monsters. You know, it's not like that. But little kids, sensitive hearts, keep that in mind. Spawning NPCs, that's non-player characters. That is random uh, game-generated characters that are walking around that they can interact with. If you have a texture pack, you can put the information in there, etc., etc. So just go on down here. Once it's all said and done, you can hit save and then go back to the dashboard. And then you're going to need to restart your server for these changes to take effect. You can see it's restarting here. And we're done. You can see it's online. The server is all nice and ready. Now, let's take a look at this real quick. If you click over on console, this is going to bring up your access to the back end where you can literally put in codes that change the behavior of the game. Now, if you know these, then you can customize it and do whatever you want. You can find these things online. Different things like making it daytime all the time so that nighttime never happens. Uh, there's a code that you can put in here for that. Other things that will fundamentally change the behavior of the game. One of the really cool things about Apex Minecraft hosting is their chat support. So if you log into the chat and ask them a question, they're very responsive, very responsive. And they'll give you the information that you need. So if you wanted to make it perpetually daytime, no nighttime on here because you don't want it to get dark for little kids or you don't want it to rain or whatever in that world, then you just ask them how to do it. They give you the code and then you're going to put the code in here. One note, um, if you get a code from uh, somewhere else on the internet, which there's plenty that you can find, um, they will probably give you that code starting with a slash. So it'd be slash, you know, whatever the super code is that you're supposed to put in. Take the slash away. Um, this this system will not recognize that slash. So just keep that in mind. Just a, just a little caveat there. So basically, that's it. Your server is running. It's ready to go. It's time to log into your game. Okay, now it's time for us to plug in our server information and begin playing. So click on where it says play, and then you will see over here to the right, you've got where it says servers. You've got a bunch of servers that are already online, and then you can add a server. So plug in the server name. In my case, it is CTA-Minecraft. So, and then the server address, which is, go to the next field, needs the port address, and the port address is 25663. Now if I put everything in properly, I can hit save, and then it's going to be down here, and I can choose and connect, and it is generating my world. 
Okay, and here we are in our world. I want to get in fly mode here. And look, you can see, there's the world. This is the world that we created, and it's raining. That's great. It's raining in our world here, folks. But that's it. We can start building stuff. Now, let me show you what we're doing over on the one for our church. Look at all that. We've got a big old world here that we've been creating over the last few days. We've got water slides, horses. It's like a farm. Somebody built a farm, it looks like. Pretty cool. This is the kind of stuff that you can do with the kids in your ministry. Let them have a blast making a nice big world that you guys can all play in. Okay, so as you can see, it's really easy to do. You don't have to have hardly any experience. I have played Minecraft for a total of maybe 20 minutes in my entire life, and I set up and deployed that Minecraft server, got logged in, but we've been using this with our church, and it is a resounding success. Our family pastor is even going as far as starting to do actual Bible studies with the kids inside the Minecraft world. It's really cool. If you want to learn how we're doing that and taking this whole concept to the next level, then click on this link right over here and enjoy it. It's really cool. Now, take what you've learned and go change lives. The lives of little kids.